there we go. Okay, so let me um, rephrase, uh, refresh something that I mentioned earlier, which is regarding why did I choose to put a line file here, right? With the two dots and not here. Why in here I put a dot? Because you might get tempted to do this. You see? Because the dot means the current folder. That's what it means, right? But it only means that when you have a program and not a library. What happens is that with libraries, you include a library in another program. And the meaning of that dot changes where it is. With a program, you don't have that problem. So if you are a programmer that you're creating a library, like a library, like a class for other people to use, you should understand the difference between this little dot in here after the include and this dot in here when you're not in an include. This dot, when it is right next to an include in AutoHotKey v2, this is not the same in v1, but in AutoHotKey v2, this dot means look for this library folder that pertains to this file, the rufadium.ahk file, wherever that is, then it goes ahead and looks for the dot and looks for the lib folder. So that means this is the Rufadium file located anywhere on your computer. And it will find it, and then it will go to the lib folder and get whatever you told it to get, which is what that usually means. This dot in here is different. In here, it means from the currently working directory, from the working directory. And that means that when you include this library into your script, the working directory is the script folder. And for that reason, it is gonna fail because this lib folder does not contain, the lib folder in the program probably does not contain this location. So then you have to be very careful and put in there the A, um, file, uh, sorry, a line file. Oh, email list and please. Like this. And now this means read the current file, wherever that is, read the Rufadium file, wherever that is, go back one, which is to the folder in here, and then look left the lib folder. So this is the difference because now, when you include the Rufadium library into your project, this means look for the Rufadium file and then go to the lib folder that is right next to it. So be careful with that. In your case, um, 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 Irfan, here's what I will do. The first part is check if the file exists. If not file exists, driver name, this is one of those things that you don't need permission from the developer to do this, okay? You might give them, but in this case, you don't have to because, let me ask you this question. Does Rufadium work without the Chrome driver? No, it doesn't work without the driver. So I, I have to either tell you that it doesn't work with an error, right? Or I can just automatically download it for you. So this is a situation in which the, the developer, I'm including your library, I want it to work, okay? I really need that, that library to work because that's why I'm getting Rufadium. So this is one of those that let me think about it should i throw an error yeah what is the what is the the should i let the user decide the developer i'm sorry should i let the developer decide how he is going to download the driver i can do that 
or I can make it easy for him. And I think in this case, I would make it easy. I would just download it. Okay. So the first thing I would do is just, or ask him before doing that, of course. But at this point, this is a, a question that I have to ask. And I can leave that question for the user, not the developer. This is a question to the user because the user says, oh, I'm at work. I cannot download this driver. Okay. Or I'm at home. I can download it. This is not a question for the developer. This is a question to the user. At that point, yes, I have a message box. Okay, look, um, mess if, and then message box, um, the Chrome driver needed for Rufadium. And this is the problem. Does the user know what Rufadium means? They don't know. So does the Chrome driver that the Chrome driver needed is not installed. Do you want to download it now? Then I say, um, oh no, I can do it here. Um, missing driver. And then I say yes or no. Icon question. So it is a question that I'm making. But you see, this is where, and then I say equals no. Usually I go with the negative one. So I can exit right away or return or throw. Now I can throw an error to let the developer handle it. So if the user said no, do you want to exit the application? Do you want to log it? Do you want to just stop now i give the developer some 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 um some options error driver not installed now that if if they say no now if they say yes now i'm going to do a few steps i'm going to get the file name so um name so this is going to be uh split path that's going to be um, driver nope driver name and i'm going to need the file name or out name no extension and this is the name and now depending on the name i will just call rufadium dot download and then, so you have a download. Oh, do you have a download thing? I didn't know. No, you don't have it. Exactly. Download name. And I pass the name. Now you're going to create a function that depending on the driver that you selected is going to download that driver. See what I mean? But notice that here, in here, I give the user, and this is the interesting, that's how I think about them. Message boxes are for users. Errors are for developers. If your library is not meant to ask questions to the user, you don't throw message boxes, okay? you throw errors because it is meant for the developer, not for the user. Now, if the user, in this case, I know that this question, and the, you are unique in this, not everybody has this issue. The, this is the reason why I give you two things. I give you something for the user and something for the error because the one who actually has to decide this is the user, not the developer. You see, that would be weird if a developer try to download something in my computer. I don't want that. This is the user who has to decide that. So it is a message box. This is correct. On the other hand, the other one that we were talking about for the driver here, let me see which wasn't. For this one, for the driver, this is not for the user. The user doesn't even know what a Gecko driver is. They don't know what the heck that is. And you are not gonna explain that to a user, okay? Now, the developer, yeah, I know what a Gecko driver is. 
at least I should. <laughs> so I should get an error and the developer should decide what to do with that, not the user. But but the file, the executable. Oh no, that's that's, that's a user thing. Don't 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 down, don't you ever download something without the user knowing, um, because that's how you get flagged as oh he's a hacker. He's downloading things without me, you know, having say. You know, that's not good. So in any case, I think that's the main idea. the 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 main idea that we're doing is organizing the stuff like this. This classes should be their own files but if a class has subclasses like this you see this then um you put them all in one file because all of this has to do with capabilities you see what i mean that's okay that's totally fine um and and and, and this is because this one extends the other one okay no, no, no. right but if it is as we saw here that it is actually the by class it's not really extending the session class it's just a subclass then you put them inside like this so that you can read the text exactly as it goes you know so session by link text session by selector that's okay that's totally fine i think the general idea, I think you got the general idea right now. The only thing is that you have to get used to um, alignment versus indentation. That you have to get used to it. Just to make it easier later on to fix the code. Because as soon as I entered, for example, elements here, yeah, the code is not aligned. Um, things are not going to be easy for me to read. It's going to be really hard to fix in this case not that much but look at that look at the get look at the set look at the call they're in different locations that's not gonna be easy for me to understand what is going on right now there's not enough code to make it difficult to understand but there's a lot of us later on it's gonna get really complicated I, I guarantee that in general you indent so change so convert indentation to tabs and then indent using tabs. Now you do whatever you want, how how big you want your tabs. If it is gonna be four, it's gonna, yeah, you just change the the and everything gets a little bit, you know. At four indentation, everything lines up because on your end you have the indentation set to four. But on my end, I never indent to four. I it's too small. I usually go with eight. So it depends. I, if you don't do that, then everything is, doesn't look nice. So indenting is very important when you're sharing code. For you, for yourself, it doesn't really matter. You indent however you want. But as soon as we start working in a team, indentation matters because you like the indentation at four. But I have a reason why I set the indentation to eight. So then everything doesn't line up. I, I, you set yourself to mute, actually. Uh, everyone has different resolutions and different displays, so just have their own indentation. It depends. A lot of people do it to four. Other people do it to eight. Um, if if you want to know why, and actually that's something that I have never talked about, um, I when I started coding, I saw this file which is how the linux kernel the linux kernel has to be so um linus he has his own style right but he explained why he did that and when i read it i i agreed with most of it like most of the ways, like I don't do this. Like I don't do the, I don't do the 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 the, the Kernigan and Richie styling of that. Like a lot of people love it. I don't. I don't like it. I have my reasons. But for everything else that he explained, like I was one hundred percent sure I understood and and agreed with what he explained. So for that reason, you will see me have my coding in a specific way 
it has nothing to do with our hotkey. It actually had to do with Linux. <laughs> because at that time, I understood that. I agreed with that. That's why I do it. But if you don't indent your code with tabs, again, then you remove my choice. I have no choice. Because now if you put spaces here, it doesn't matter how much I change my, my tab. I could put it to one. Look, that didn't move. You remove the choice. Now it does, I, I, that doesn't move because it is spaces. Spaces don't change, right? Doesn't matter how, what indentation I said, that is going to stay there. You just removed my Are choice. Are you your screen? Oh, no, I was not. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, but in general, what I was saying here, here he has some spaces at the beginning by mistake, I think. But right. the problem with that is that if I change my display size for my tab indentation, that didn't move. That stayed in there. Look at that. So I have line 10. It doesn't move. I changed my tab size to one. Everything changes except that. So spaces at the beginning, like for indentation, you're effectively just removing my choice. I have no choice but to look at the code, however you put it, which then removes what I'm doing this for. There is a reason why I set it to eight indentation tabs and why I have this green line right there. See this green line and this orange line? I have them there for a reason, but then I have no choice because you use spaces instead of tabs, you see? But it doesn't really, uh, it just removes that when we're sharing. If you want to code with spaces, on your code, no problem. As soon as you start sharing code with other people and now both we are going to be working on the same code, the, it, that's where it matters because then it makes everything difficult for everybody. That's that's where it's, yeah. Imagine that I just coded everything in one line all the time, just one line. You can do it like in, in other hotkey, you can do that everything, all of this, you can make it one line like this if you wanted to, yeah. How would you, would you like that? Well, it works. The fact that it works doesn't mean that it's going to be easier for you to work on it, right? But I can do it, <laughs> but that's it. So in general, that's what I wanted to say, tell you about the, 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 the idea of V2, the, the Rufadium V2 should be a little bit organized in a different way that later on, if I need to fix something or if I need to help you with something, well, then we can be on the same page. It's not going to be like um, very hard. It would be very difficult to fix a lot of indenting just to help you with one little detail, right? <laughs> it's going to be complicated. But yeah, that's it. I think, I don't know if you have any questions regarding this. I think um, we really need you to work on the downloads function. So yeah, here on Fadium. I already put this code there, and now this function is the one that you should actually, I don't know if you want me to push those changes, um, but basically, or at least if you got the idea, just do it, it's okay. Actually, it, it will be the public. Sorry? So we, we decided to put a V2 on a, a private separate repository. Oh no no no! I made a copy of that, and I can I can send you what is called a um. Oh no, but I, I think you gave me access to this I, repository. I, yeah, I did, but right. this this repository is public, and uh, we have to what do you say change the uh, location of this repository as so decided. All right, no, but it doesn't matter. I was just giving you the idea. I do. Yeah, I, I understand that. I will apply that. Exactly. So just go ahead and apply. It. And look, I sent you the JSON library. Yeah, I, I downloaded one. that. Okay. Yeah. That. Just just use that one so that you don't have those issues. And then later on, when 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 everything is ready, then I can just share uh, or help with the code if you need me to. But that's cool. Awesome. Cool. So I think we're ready here. And you you're saying. What is the difference between add, uh, edit, 
my edit like this or having this v mother right you remember that you you, you asked me yeah. about that right yeah. and i and you told me oh no i'm gonna experiment doing it this way or whatever yeah that's okay experiment all you want that that, that that's not bad right so experimenting with preferences is not bad for me i just use this when i'm gonna use that control very often like a list view for example but if it's an edit control that i'm not going to use it that often yeah that i'm i don't need a variable for that but that's preference that's you have to experiment that but another thing is experiment to fix an issue that I already know the solution to like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's totally different. Why, why spend 10 hours trying to fix something that, and I do this with Joe all the time. Like when Joe is, when we're automating something, I just ask Joe, have you done this one thing before? Because I'm not going to spend two hours trying to figure it out when he says, oh yeah, I have it in my library. Here's the, and I just look at the thing and then I understand, oh yeah, that's what is going on. And that's it. So it's better to do that instead of, spending too much time trying to fix something that somebody already knows the answer to yeah i'd say also is that because i and i um in the hero group this morning someone was having that issue with the they're like oh when i go to paste it seems like it's pasting what i had originally and i'm like oh yeah you know i i spent hours on that thing before um, yeah realizing that it was just a little slip yeah yeah but um where i that's where i'm like you know it by going through that painful time, I will definitely not likely ever make that mistake again. However, right. if Isaiah just gave you the the new version and didn't explain it, that's where I'd be like, yeah, that's that's not great, right? No, that's but not good. Getting the explanation, that's where you're like, you're more much, much more likely, I think, to have it stick and to make you're like, okay, yeah, I, yeah, um, I don't have to spend six hours to figure this out. I can learn it in 20 minutes and and not have to you know and you'll get it right you know what i mean like that's the difference so, so right now you see with the indentation we had already spoken about that but the problem is he hasn't really gone through the pain yeah sure so, right and that's why is maybe you forget maybe you don't know like it's okay but yeah. once you start getting code from somebody and you look at their indentation and you cannot change it that's when you're going to start like, oh, my God, this is painful. <laughs> like, this, this, that's when you're going to start like, oh, no, I should indent it, you know, like in a specific way. That's when I started doing that because, oh, God, how many times I go to the forums, copy the code from somebody, paste it in my editor, and it looks like, <laughs> like and then I'm trying to help them, but I cannot read the code. And then I just say, I oh, know I'm not going to help them, <laughs> you know, because I can't. No, but that. That's when you start, you know, like doing it yourself. Hey, by by the way, uh, not not to laugh, but uh, should we should we write a sarcastic reply to this to actually send something that types out the word clipboard? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I have only V two installment. I also cannot install V one in my PC. Can somebody help write a script that types clipboard? <laughs> oh God, what? It should be the types what is on the clipboard, maybe. I know. I'm just saying, like, I want to put a post a reply sarcastically that literally types out clipboard, right? And you're like, there you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, in in internet, what we do is that we put a slash s. That means that sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> like no. you you type the answer and then you use a slash s, like <laughs> because yeah, that's yeah. a funny one. It's just funny. You're like, yeah. Oh, here you go. I'm I'm up. Um, real quickly, Zayas, can you pull up? I I posted um something to you about 20 30 minutes ago um so um, i yeah in telegram yeah and let me stop sharing let me so stop. This, I, I had asked you about it the other day it dawned on me of like you know what would really be cool is to have a a shortcut to a folder that dynamically gets updated based uh -huh, on yeah. what month it is and so i wrote this this well ChatGPT helped a lot but i i it started off doing a really weird way but um uh -huh. I, I went back and adapted it to use creating a shortcut instead. And this works great, but I'm like, hey, um, one, why don't you, I think in, in a minute, you can convert this to V2, right? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. And then, and then after we do that, what I was thinking is, it, it, even though there would be a lot of several parameters, it, it would be a very simple function. Yeah, sure. So check this out. 
format time. Um, it says month there, but it should be. Oh well, no, I think that's the very month. Month getting. Right. No, I'm no, I'm I'm storing that in. Oh right, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I get what you mean now. So it would be format time. Let me let me do it in VS Code, so it'll be yeah, easier sure. when when I get. Yeah, intelligence really helps. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but Airfan, because I had already explained this to Isaiah, so it makes more sense to him. But do you understand? Like every month, I, I have a shortcut on my, you know, to to the folder for that month. But I'm like, hey, I could have that shortcut get updated based on what month it is, and then I don't have to manually like go to the parent one and then navigate to it. And I have a hot string for this, but the hot string's great because, of course, I'm launching the script and it updates it. But I'm like, how would I create a shortcut that is dynamic and gets updated? Um, and so this would be something I could run every time I boot. Probably is plenty early, early enough, you know, enough frequently enough, or even just in my main script. Can do destination path. And I usually this is one of those things that I learned. Um, I usually do not include the backslash at the end of the yeah. so i can use it as the yeah so so i can use it instead of a dot i just use the backslash you see so i just put it here and that actually just um you it goes and um appends it there and i use it to instead of using a dot i use the backslash there now yeah. in this case it is like newsletter link here um, file create shortcut. I don't need the percent signs for the folder path. Let me see. Yeah, I was I was so looking forward to seeing this in V two, just because with all those percent signs and crap, I'm like, yeah, hey, it's gonna look much easier to read in V. I'm sorry, in V two, it's gonna be one. Right. Now this is the C, and then A for. Yeah, I don't know. If, is that required? It was the working directory, I think, is what that was, and I'm like, I don't. Let me see what it is. Um, hold on. Let me wait for this to. Let me see something. So here, that's the arguments. No, you pass that to the script as an argument. Mm -mm. Are you on the right one? Sorry, no, exactly. I was not on the right one. Yeah. I'm looking for this one here, the working directory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's. Is it required though? Like I. Don't... I should have no, tested that, that's that's for the hot that's for the for the for the um, shortcut when you double click the shortcut it will set the working directory to the c folder for that shortcut which i don't maybe yes i would i would put the same destination pass as yeah. the working directory right but not the c drive yeah but that's it this is a v2 script it's basically the same Right. I usually, when I have it so long, you see, people tend to not read long lines. It, when you're reading, if it's too long, you, you just skip that line because it's too long. What I do then is that I just split that, especially when the, when the thing is too long. I just split it into lines like this. Not everybody likes that. I do, but then here is not indentation. I want to align that to this one here because all of that is related to the file shortcut. So that, that, that's where alignment comes into place. This is not indentation. This is not a new piece of code. This is related to the same piece of code that I had before. So um, this is a V2, this is a V2 script. So I need the base folder and the this base folder and the destination path. Those are my two variables, right? I just need um, create month shortcut, something like that. Then base folder and destination path. And I will default to this, guys. I could just copy that, right? Again, too long. I go to the next line. And destination path, make it here, align. And now these two go here. 
Now, this time, everything should be shifted to the right because it's an indentation, but I lost my alignment here, indented to define, and then align. So one tab, because it's on the same indentation level, but this is aligned. That's how it works. And now we have a function that I just pass that, and that's it. Well, I, I, um, I would also include the icon as a parameter. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, the icon as well. And I was considering the actual month, but I'm like, yeah, you know, because people might want to pipe a different folder for valid email, different thing in there. But um, I think for now, this is fine. If we once we get that icon in there. You make that comma. Mm -hmm. Line number two. Line number two. Yep, three. here. Yeah. All right. So now that all of this is smaller lines, right? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly that's it that. actually does fit. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Right. Now here's the oh, thing. Oh, hold on. So um the newsletter link, the shortcut, the name of the shortcut where it's newsletter link on line 14, that should also oh, right. be yeah. And it's actually it's it's a good way to spot where it's um more than once too, but yeah, the, the name of the shortcut. Um, is that the first thing? So what what is it? Yeah. So the shortcut for the file, name, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The question is: Is that going to be the first parameter? Sure. Yeah. All right. So at this point, this one lost. And the oh, well, I no. say, like, I realize, like, wow, there's actually several print, but again, a function still makes it very clear. Here's what you right. have to update. Right. All right, so let me just put this here. Um, I usually, if it is parameters, I don't have spaces in here, but that's, I'm just telling you my preference. When it's parameters, it is like this. When it is a, a, a definition in, in my script, then I put the spaces. But here I just don't have spaces, just so I know that there are parameters. Kind of like if I look at the thing, oh, that was a parameter that I had to, make it as I need it. That's it. So well, that's, uh, in, in regardless of what you pick, it's good to have a system, right? And like, yeah, that's what and that's the thing. So you, you pick a system, but you stick to oh. it. And that, that way, when I'm reading code, it's very easy for me because I know what I'm reading. Oh, those are parameters right away. Um, so this, so the month, I think this is the part that is automatically calculated. So it's okay to have, to not well, have it as a parameter. Well, that's what I was saying is yeah. I could people saying they'd want the year or whatever, right? But right, okay. No, I'm not looking for the for end now. Of yeah, for yeah, exactly. for now is is okay. Now here's the part. This is a function. So uh, this is the part, um, Irfan, that I want you to understand. This is the concept. This function is not meant for a user. This is meant for a developer. Who is going to use a function? A developer. So if I try to create a file and it fails, I want to throw an error because this is something for the developer and the developer must handle it. But at this point, I know that the file create and the file delete, they throw errors if they, this was, um, um, the they throw error. errors already. So I don't have to put that. But the file delete, I want to ignore that error because if you couldn't find the file oh, and you right. try to delete the file, it's going to complain about it. But in this case, I just leave it like that. But if the file shortcut could not be created, yes, I want to get an error for that. I, I want to leave that error in so that the developer can go ahead and say, okay, what should I do if the file was not created as I thought it should be, right? So I send you the code, Joe, that's your V2 function that does the thing. But yeah. that's the thing, it is uh, uh, not many people understand that if you're creating something for a user, it's very different as to whether you're creating it for a developer. Once you get that idea, then you understand. For developers, throwing errors. For users, message boxes with decisions. That's what that, because they they will not understand 
why is the script not running? Uh, yeah, that's the point. You, you know, and you're going to laugh at this, Isaiah. And that's why I, I always say, use my Notify uh, yeah, class. Yeah, exactly. Because so, I'm not, neither of those, right? Like, right, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm above a, a, a regular person, but I don't really care. I do want to know what happened, but I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. Uh, exactly. You, you, you ignore by default. I do. What but I just, yeah. I to know it's there. Oh, okay. Yeah. That okay. Happened. Yeah, exactly. But I think he, we got a lot of um, information on this. I, I don't know. We should stop giving new information for now, but that's right. cool.